everyone, this is Summer Erin, and today we are diving into a base game updates for The Sims 4, and this is going to be a complete history of the major base game updates. This is going to be part of a really exciting series. I was inspired by the recent base game update, and I wanted to dig into where we've been, where we're going, and what we still need. So this first part is going to be where we've been, the entire history. I dug into some archives from The Sims VIP for the past six years, and I'm really excited to share this with you. Before we go ahead and get started, my name is Simmer Erin. I do Sims 4 news, info, and speculation videos, as well as pair lives, news, speculation, and info videos, and of course, I have playlists for both. Why might you ask, am I doing this to myself? I'm doing this because the most recent base game updates have gotten us a lot very excited in some ways. We're gonna get some firefighters, we're gonna get some gridless options for placing windows and doors. We're gonna also get some abilities to split bills through the mailbox, and I'm sure I forgot some other things. But the point is, a lot of people are really excited about this, and everybody was doing videos on the most recent base game updates, and I thought, why not take a look back and see how far we've gone, which is gonna be a positive thing, and also it's going to give us some ideas of what we could expect in the future. So let's go ahead though and get started in December of 2014. So in December of 2014, they added the business and athletic careers, paid time off, family leave, a holiday celebration pack, the ability to eat fruits and vegetables from your garden, and apparently Sims before were not able to die at venues, no one knows why. In addition, there were a couple gallery updates. You were able to save rooms and also sort for features for families. And there was a cheat that I'm sure for you builders is very important, and that's move objects on. So before December 2014, there was no move objects on. Just think about that. In February of that same year was the 15th anniversary of The Sims 4. So it'd be interesting to compare the 15th anniversary versus the 20th anniversary. Instead of a interesting hot tub for the 15th anniversary, we got genealogy, which is kind of strange that it wasn't in the game prior to this. But with genealogy, you are now able to track up to 10 generations of your Sims, and we also got some new achievements for those legacy players. Props to you guys, because I can never play with a family for that long. And there are also some Valentine's Day shirts and a bear. In that same year, in that same month rather, there was also an update for Mac players because this was the year, 2015, where it came, The Sims 4 came for Mac as well. In March of 26 of the same year, we got basements. So before then, there were no basements. We also were able to paint pictures from references Crop lots, if it didn't completely, if your build didn't completely fit your lot, you were also now able to build relationships with coworkers and schoolmates. Apparently before, you went to work, you went to school, you were not able to get any relationship build. And then townies also had a job. So did before they not have jobs? I guess not. In May of that year, we were able to influence whether or not what kind of gender your sim was going to have for their baby, depending on what they eat, and also aliens now had full access to cast items. In May 14th, we were able to get invited by sims we know to places and invited for dates, which is a good feature, but I'm sure sometimes gets on people's nerves. June was a big time for 2015 because we got Newcrest, and honestly, I really wish we would get some other new worlds, but we did get Newcrest to build in, and this is when the welcome wagon arrived. I feel like so many people are so annoyed by the welcome wagon, Guess what? Before June 2015, it didn't exist. We also got our custom roll tool, which we're able to draw room shapes. July of that year, we were finally able to lock doors so we could keep Sims from getting in our business. Really helpful for stuff like the Black Widow challenge. We also got half walls, the saucer light, which I gotta tell you, that saucer light, I, whenever I build, which is not very often by the way, but whenever I build, I always use the saucer light because I'm lame like that. For the gallery, we're now able to sort by lot size, room type, lots, and price. 
which is amazing to think about that you weren't able to do that before. The gallery also added some new lots, such as parks and libraries that weren't there prior. August of that year saw the return of dishwashers. In September, they gave us the jealous trait and also the ability to claim beds. And rounding out 2015 in December, we were able to add Sims to groups, hire NPCs, and now there were pools with a pool venue. 2016 was also a year for updates, but not quite as busy as 2015. In 2016, we got started in February with the return of the Tragic Clown painting, followed by the Grilled Cheese Aspiration. Let me know in the comments below if you guys have ever played through that and the klepto trait, which I think was a great addition. And in addition, now you could hire a gardener if your sims were too lazy to do it themselves. In June, we were now able to customize gender. So for a lot of people, this was definitely a very big update. In addition with that, there were now new voice settings for your sims and new clothing filters. So that was the big update, and I feel like a lot of people are hoping that we're going to get another big update like that eventually. This was again in 2016. In June of that year, later in June, we also got the Monsters Under the Bed for kids, which I'm sure some people like and some people really hate. In July, we got the ability to have nannies, which of course is where that render comes from. That was stirring rumors we were getting babies. And finally, rounding out that year for the most significant updates, in October, we got lot traits, new lot traits. These included homey, fast internet, great acoustics, science lair, conv convivial, natural light, bracing breezes, or private dwelling. And some of those are big tongue twisters for me. It's 2017 in January. Finally, we got toddlers. Again, this was in January of 2017, but we did finally get toddlers. And with toddlers, of course, we got a lot of different things. And there were some new traits with toddlers, there were some cast items, etc. But honestly, this probably was one of the big, big deal updates, probably the biggest update for a lot of people. And some people honestly tell me all the time they hate toddlers, and I totally get it. But it's good they finally added that life stage because it is just freaking weird to see a baby turn into a child. I think that was really good that they remedied that situation very late in my opinion, but thank goodness it actually came. In November, builders were probably a lot happier because we got four new roof types, pentagonal, hexagonal, octagonal, and round roofs. We also got some advanced curvature mode and the ability to add gabled and hipped roofs as well as the ability to shrink items. Again, really amazing to think about that these things weren't there before. And in addition, they added the photography skill, which I didn't include this in my notes, but of course that eventually would get updated later on when Moschino came out. That actually rounded out 2017, and 2018, I really only put down two major updates. So the first one was right before Seasons, and this was a really good update, and I'm really hopeful that if we get another big pack, hopefully we will get some more substantial things, because it seems that we get a lot of these substantial updates right before an expansion pack. So for June, we got glass roofs, hot and cold weather outfits, swimwear for toddlers. We also got a whole gardening overhaul. So this included a lot of things, but among those included some new options with seed packets, the ability to take your gardening evolution up to a new level, the ability to research plants, and the ability to sell harvestables. In November 13th of 2018, we got the terrain tools, which honestly I've never been good at. I struggle with them so much, but it's good we got those. I feel like it's a shame that those terrain tools didn't come initially with the game because we still have very flat worlds. But in any case, we did get terrain tools. We got more basement levels, the first person camera, which honestly makes me feel a little bit queasy, and the style influencer career, which came with a sketch pad, a stylus board, and there was a brief positivity challenge. 2019 started off with the Lunar New Year update. I don't think this was super significant, but I did include it because 
The items were pretty cool and it did come with a number of recipes. In April of that year, we got the freelancer careers, which I honestly do love the idea of freelancer careers, but we all know that ever since they've been added to the game, it's been on and off problem central with glitches. So the freelancer careers were an artist, a programmer, and a writer. And also for builders, finally we got a plain white shelf. In June of that year, we were able to finally randomize traits, which again, I didn't remember we weren't able to do that. We also got the Pride Month clothes update, and I think we also got some Pride Month flags and decor. You can correct me if I'm wrong. We also got stilt foundations and the clothing optional and off the grid lot traits, which I believe this was before Island Living, the back float interaction, and a whole fishing overall overhaul rather, which included new interactions, social interactions, the ability to mentor, and also to angle for fish. In July, we got the cast stories update, which I did have fun at the time, but I feel like since then I've kind of stopped using it. And that's a shame. I think I should go back and just see what kind of sims I could get because I think that's a fun update. We also got the ability to show live objects, which this is a big deal because it unlocked so many build items for players. I just really hope we get the ability eventually to sort through those a little bit easier because it is such a big pain. But in any case, this also was a controversial update because this is when we got the rebranding. Do you guys remember that? So everything got a way brighter and of course the expansion packs and the game packs and the stuff packs, the way they looked changed quite a bit. And actually they even had to address some issues with that because initially the loading screens were really bright and some people were complaining of migraines. So the Sims team did tune it down a little bit. But obviously this was moving towards a complete rebranding and I'm wondering if we're going to see more rebranding which I'd like to talk about in a different video. In September we did configurable stairs which were not the spiral staircases a lot of people wanted but I personally think it was a really cool update. I think that a lot of people can do a lot with that. Not me but a lot of people who are skilled with that. And we also got some Middle Eastern inspired clothing with that patch. And then finally in November of last year, we got multi-story columns and new UI scaling. So that's the history of the major base game updates in The Sims 4. Now I do want to address, I accidentally missed two major updates and that was both in 2014. We got the pools added to the game and we also got ghosts added to the game with new capabilities. So anyway, let me know what you think about this history of the base game updates. I really hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed going into detail and looking at the bigger updates of the game, how far we've come from 2014, even though a lot of times we talk about how far we have to go. In future videos, I am going to cover some analysis of this as well as what I want to see in the base game for cast, build by, and of course core gameplay features. I would also like to think about the most recent base game updates that are coming soon and thinking about if there's a good progression in terms of base game updates, if there's more we want to see, and also an overemphasis, I believe, on build base game updates and not quite as much in terms of core gameplay. But that can wait for another video. On that note, I will let you go. Definitely let me know your thoughts below and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.